across the UK, Overnights with Paul Ross. Tributes are plenty, and quite right too, in the paper this morning for the late Andy Fordham, whom we learnt yesterday had died at the age of just 59, former world champion, of course, back page of the star. Tributes flood in for darts legend Fordham. Much the same story on the back page of the mirror this morning, R.I.P. Viking, his nickname, of course. Darts mourns death of former world champion Andy Fordham. And in the sun, there's a big tribute to him as well, and quite right too. All the papers carry some kind of recognition of the man who achieved so much and has left us way too young. And he was a lovely fella, remarkable individual. I got to know him as a friend. I'd like to think when we were together on a show, ITV show called uh, Celebrity Fit Club, and he had problems all his life, well, after his father died with his weight, and he was also somebody who later in life talked about problems he'd had, say, with alcohol and stuff, but he was somebody also plagued by ill health, and we're now going to pay tribute to him and look back at his life and career in the excellent company of Marcus Stead, our expert on all matters darts related, also writes for Snooker Seed magazine, of course. Good morning, uh, Marcus. Now... Tell us a bit about Andy's background, first of all. A very sad loss, and our thoughts are with his wife, the lovely Jenny, this morning. Good morning, Paul. Thank you for inviting me onto the programme. First of all, I'd like to associate myself with your comments there. Uh, my condolences to his wife, Jenny, and all his friends and family. We received the news uh, yesterday afternoon that Andy had passed away at the age of 59. And the tributes that have been paid during the course of yesterday afternoon and into the evening and in today's papers... They show that his popularity transcended the darts community. Even people who didn't really follow darts knew who Andy Fordham was. He was larger than life, but he was also a very decent and a very pleasant man. He was a gentle giant in the true sense of the word. Andy was born in Bristol in 1962, and at school he loved his football. I'm sure we'll be talking about his battle with obesity in a moment, but incredibly, at school he was known as the Whippet. Yeah, he loved track he and so field, didn't he? He was a fast runner. He did, Paul. Uh, he was so th thin and quick at that time. He mainly grew up in Charlton, South East London. As you say, he was involved in track and field. And as a young man, Andy was fit. But then at about the age of 26, he got a bad back and he was laid up for about three months. That was when he started to put the weight on. And he started playing darts sort of by accident, really, in that some of his football teammates were keen darts players. He started playing by filling in for one of them one evening in a team event. And from there, he went on to play county darts from the B team to the A team. Then he became an England international. And Andy made his debut at the BDO World Championship in 1995. He immediately made an impact. He beat some really decent players, Nicky Turner, Ronnie Sharp, Paul Williams. Then he went on to lose to the eventual winner, Richie Burnett, in the semi-finals. And Andy said that even when he made his debut at the lakeside, he drank a shed load and because he won, he thought the drinking worked and it yeah. was a source of false economy in a sense. And this became a habit. Whenever he played, he would take the stage having drunk 24 bottles of Holston pills yeah. and a hip flask of brandy. Now, most people would collapse long before they even got ready. Well, well he like that, showed me. I mean, I went to his pub. He, he ran a pub for a while with Jenny in Dartford. And I went there once and behind the bar... And it was a different era, even 10, 15 years ago. Behind the bar, there was a bar receipt, and he'd had in one day-long session 63 bottles of pills. It's extraordinary. And you kind of think, it? it's amazing. I mean, God bless him, and he managed to overcome that later in life. But it's amazing, in some senses, had he carried on like that, he wouldn't have made 59, would he? These are crazy, crazy amounts of alcohol, Paul. And, you know, 1995, again, he reached the semi-finals at the Lakeside. And like the previous year, he beat some great players, Chris Mason, Andy Jenkins, Colin Monk. Then he lost 5-3 to Steve Beaton, the eventual yeah. winner in the semi-finals. His first really big TV trophy came in 1999 when he won the Windmill World Masters. Uh, which was being televised by Eurosport in those days. It was staged at the lakeside and he beat the Wolverhampton Wanderer Wayne Jones 3-1 in the final. But for all those years at, at the BDO World Championship, he was the nearly man, but he put that right in 2004. In the first round, he beat the qualifier Brian Derbyshire 3-0. Then he beat the former World Masters champion Tony West 3-0 in the next round. He came close to hitting a nine-darter in the third set of that match. In the quarterfinals, he beat one of his closest friends, Daryl Fitton, 5-4. Then in the semifinals, he was involved in this extraordinary match, I'll never forget it, against Raymond Van Barneveld, the defending champion and a strong tournament favourite. And he trailed 3-0 and 4-2 in sets. He came back to yeah. win 5-4, one of the greatest matches the Lakeside had ever seen. <laughs> Then in the final, then he faced Mervyn King, 
there were some incredible moments then as well. The deciding leg of, of the eighth set, Mervyn needed double 18, but Andy had the darts in his hand, needed to take out 139. Sure enough, he did it. And in the next set, Andy recovered from 2 0 down in legs to take the set 3 2, hitting double eight. That gave him the match by six sets to three. That gives you some idea about how Andy's drinking it impacted him. He couldn't actually remember the greatest moment of his career. He had no recollection of winning the world title because of the drink. But the same token that he then took on Phil the Power Taylor, did he not? I mean, that didn't end particularly well. But he won a couple of games against Phil, didn't he? He did, Paul. This was November 2004, and Barry Hearn and Sky Sports set up a clash between Andy and the greatest player of all time, Phil Taylor, who was dominating PDC darts at the time and was their reigning world champion. To this day, it's the only time Sky have ever done a pay-per-view darts event. But things went very badly wrong on the night. It was meant to be the best of 13 sets at the Circus Tavern in Perfleet, which was the home of the PDC World Championship at the time. Sky did weeks and weeks of promos for it. They called it the showdown. It was very warm on stage and Andy was sweating profusely. And the thing about the Circus Tavern is the ceiling is very low and there was nowhere really for the heat to go. No. But you could see a real redness in Andy's eyes. After the seventh set, they took a break because Andy was feeling short of breath. Phil Taylor was leading 5-2 at the time. Doctors examined Andy and advised him not to continue, so Phil Taylor was declared the winner by default. But then something else happened that night. Andy was advised to get himself to hospital. He had a friend with him who was driving, so they felt there was no need to call an ambulance. But here's something that wasn't very widely publicised at the time, Paul. Andy didn't make it to the hospital that night. As he got into his friend's car, he split his trousers and he told his friend to drive him to the pub where he'd been landlord since 1995. The pub was called The Rose, which is in Dartford, yeah. really not that far from the Circus Tavern in Perfleet, it's just across the bridge in effect. And later that evening, after all he'd gone through, Andy was propping up the bar, drinking and watching the match back on TV. And he was weighing 31 stone by this stage. Yeah. We're nearing the end of 2004 now. He was invited to take part in Celebrity Fit Club. And we'd seen in the previous decade how year by year when he appeared at the BDO World Championship, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. He was even permitted to wear trainers on stage, which wouldn't normally be allowed. But formal shoes caused him a lot of discomfort. And what happened after what happened at the Circus Tavern in November 2004? It was clear something had to change. And he, he, and he was, say, I must say, he was very, very motivated on Fit Club. And he was cutting down, talking then about, and he really cut back on his drinking. He did lose a fair bit of weight. I mean, it was difficult in some ways because a lot of it was done for the camera, a lot of it was kind of stunted up and that kind of thing. But he did have difficulty walking any great distance, but he pushed himself. And he also was very good. I mean, we went swimming a few times in the program. And of course, that buoyancy motivated him and he did seem to be able to and he was turning things around then I think wasn't it? I mean he did he did have other health scares but he kind of I think had realized that he needed to change things in his life and he began to change them he did Paul because just before he went on Celebrity Fit Club which wasn't that long at all after what had happened at the Circus Tavern he'd seen a doctor who told him his liver was only working at 25 percent capacity he was told to stop drinking alcohol immediately and I think for Andy, it was a very different experience being on that program for what it would have been for someone like you and others in your team. Now, for you, it, yes, it was nice for you to lose some weight, improve your health and your fitness. But for Andy, it was really a case of being vital that he changed his lifestyle. Yeah. And Andy began the series weighing 30 stone and eight pounds. By the end of the series, he'd lost three stone. I should point out, Paul, in fairness, you managed to lose two stone, one pound yourself. Um, but in that series, there was a huge amount of goodwill towards Andy from Harvey Walden, the drill instructor, and also from Anne Widdicombe, who was one of the judges, having been a contestant in the previous series herself. And by the end of that series, Paul, Andy had gone from barely being able to walk to being able to run short distances. And I recall, Paul, you and Andy had a great rapport. Oh, on yeah, and I, I kept in touch with him and we kept in touch with his It is so sad. Let me ask you this finally, Marcus, and I appreciate your tribute to him. How will he be remembered as a player, as a dance player? Well, I think he was someone his popularity transcended darts. And, you know, post 2005, realistically, he went downhill in terms of his form, though he did qualify for the um, the Grand Slam of darts in 2015, where yeah. he managed to beat, uh, he managed to win one of his three matches, but he was in a tough group with the likes of Adrian Lewis and Michael Smith. But he was somebody, even if you hardly ever watched the darts, you knew who Andy Fordham was. And in recent years, 
okay, he piled on the, the pounds back in the, in the last decade, but in the last two or three years, he lost the weight again and put himself in a rigorous weight loss program, and that got in the papers as well. Um, last year, he was hospitalized for treatment on a, a bowel blockage. Mm-hmm. He did a lengthy online video on, on YouTube during the first lockdown last summer with his sponsor, Win Mao, where he had plenty to say about his career, as well as modern darts. He was a big supporter of Fallon Sherrick and women's darts in general. Then in January this year, he contracted COVID, which he described as the scariest thing he'd ever faced. Yeah. In re- you know, in recent months, he'd signed up for this new World Seniors Championship due to take place next February at the Circus Tavern. And wouldn't it have been wonderful, Paul, to have seen him back on the big stage again? But sadly, it wasn't to be. Marcus, we appreciate your time this morning. I should mention as well, of course, he was a f- fanatical football fan. He, he supported Millwall and Rangers. And when he won the BDO title, he paraded the trophy at Ibrox. So for him, that would have been a, a magic moment. A wonderful individual now sadly missed. That was our tribute here on Talk Sport and Talk Radio, courtesy of Marcus Stead to Andy Fordham, the Viking. More from us after this.